that after, after the end of this uh, session, we'll have an activity outside. So there are going to, there's going to be some pizza. So, uh, so please stay so I mean you have, have some lunch with all of us. And, uh, and uh, so let's close this. Uh, Thank you, Hossein. And yes, I, it's, it's a big responsibility to give the last lecture. Right? And thanks uh, all of you for staying until the very end. So it's, uh, I, I was expecting much less people at the end. But no, that's uh, good. OK, so where we are and uh, where we stopped uh, yesterday. So yesterday, I defined uh, what is a parameterized reduction, right? And basically, I was also saying that uh, if you're doing algorithms, you don't need to know what W1 completeness, what W2, whatever is. So the only thing you need to know that you can reduce uh, some hard problem to your problem, solution of some hard problem to solution of your problem. And uh, the role of the most uh, important uh, or the most uh, basic problem is uh, multicolor click in parameterized complexity. For reasons, I don't know, so it, 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 it was not clear a priori, and, but at some moment when people uh, invented this problem, it appeared that this problem becomes very handy, right? And now it's like most of the proofs are using multicolor click. So what is a multicolor click? I have a kpartite graph, right? So view it as a, every kpartite, every, so this is an independent set, so, so view it as a, just a colored graph, so view this as a colored in k colors, and then I, uh, and there are ages between colors, some ages. And then I'm asking if there is a clique which of size k which contains all k colors, right? So that's the problem. Okay, so first of all, just why this problem is hard. And again, so now I'm using engineering approach, so I say that this problem is not easier as a clique, right? So I want to reduce clique to uh, multicolor clique and the reduction is very simple. So here is example, so instance of a graph where I want to find a click, and I make an instance of multicolor click. I just uh, take k copies of this of the vertices of this graph, right? And now again, the standard trick is uh, so uh, so uh, for every age of the graph, I make a lot of copies of this age. So actually, what I am doing so for every pair of vertices which are adjacent here. V and U, I make all copies of U vertex adjacent to all copies of the V vertex. Right, so this is, and now my claim is that this graph has a click, click of size at least K, if and only if this graph has a click of size K. How come, right? So, okay, so if I have a click here, right, so then I just take a, um, so what I'm doing, I take uh, a copy of each vertex in each of this uh, class, right? And I will have a multicolor click here. And if I have a multicolor click here, because it's multicolor click, I'm using a copy of exactly one vertex, right? Okay, so if, if I have a multicolor click here, right? I cannot use two copies of the same vertex in this multicolor click. Why? Because uh, two copies of the same vertex, they're not adjacent. Right? So this means that if I have a multicolor click here, then it should also be a click here. Right? So this is a kind of a proof. Okay, uh, and uh, then uh, this also shows uh, that multicolored independent set is also, the, uh, well, W something hard or reducible to click, right? Because uh, what is a multicolored independent set? Again, I have a graph which is partitioned into K cl classes, but now every color class is a click and I ask if there is an independent set of size k such that, uh, which contains k vertices of different colors, right? So, and this is again, it's just, I take complement of this graph and I have a click here, if and only if I have a colored click independent set here, right? Okay, let's uh, go to just uh, more interesting reductions. Let's see why dominating set is hard, right? So I want to reduce uh, multicolored, 
I, look, so here I don't speak about uh, any, uh, what is, I, I, even I, I even haven't defined W1. Right? I'm saying, okay, I'm doing engineering approach and I tell you, okay, this problem is at least as hard from parameterized perspective as a click. Right? So if you show, if you define a class W1 hardness, and if you prove that click is W1 hard, then this proof will show you that the problem is W1 hard. Okay, no, I understand the approach, but I can assume taking a form piece space, okay, complete, and reduce an MP hard problem to this one, okay, and then use this problem, but, but it's in piece space, no, okay? So I'm using a, a more hard problem to prove some more reductions? Yes, but you pro, but... Uh, no, no, but you, you, you look, I, I'm not proving, I'm not speaking about, okay, so the way I understand your question, you speak about hardness and completeness, right? Yeah. So when something belongs to the class, it's complete, and when something just uh, as hard as some other problems in the class, it's hard, right? <laughs> NP hard, NP complete, yes. So the only thing, uh, and also what I was saying, from the uh, algorithmic perspective, well, if I'm not doing complexity, I, I wouldn't care much if the problem is complete or not, right? You have your favorite problem, you, prof, uh, you prove that this NP hard, or NP complete, does it make much difference for you? Yeah, yeah that, that's exactly, I'm not speaking about. Exactly, yes, this is, this, this, this is the only thing is, uh, so what, what, what it shows is the only thing it shows that if click is not FPT, if you make this assumption, then it means that multicolor click is, no, is also not FPT. Mm -hmm. right? And I will be speaking only about this type of reductions, I will not be speaking about complexity at all. <laughs> right? That's all. Okay, so this was a reduction to click. So let's do the same for dominating set. So I want to, so my reduction is from a multicolored independent set to dominating set. So here I have a, so what is my reduction? So I have an instance G of multicolored independent set and, I, uh, and uh, with a parameter K. And I want to construct an instance So this is multicolored independent set, and this is a dominating set. So the parameter will be the same. So uh, this graph will have a, this graph has a multicolored independent set, if and only if, the new graph will have a dominating set of size k, right? So how I will construct these things? So I take the instance of a multicolor independent set. So this, so five can, so this is a click, this is a click, this is a click, this is a click, right? And then uh, to every click here, I add two vertices, so for X and Y. I make all these vertices adjacent to the clear, to the vertices in the click, but these vertices between themselves, they're not adjacent, right? Okay. So what, what I'm trying to enforce, right? So independent set, how it look? So I, I'm looking for independent set of size k. So in, in the original problem. So, so I definitely, I have to pick up exactly one vertex for independent set from each of the clicks, right? So now when I start doing dominating set, so what, uh, what I enforce when I add these two vertices? I also, so if I'm looking for independent, for dominating set of size k, so when I put these two vertices, I enforce that uh, I need at least one vertex in the click to dominate this, uh, the click plus two vertices, right? And also actually, I, so, uh, so what I will enforce, that this vertex from dominating set, it should be from the click. Right? Because if, if it's not from the click, to dominate the click, um, uh, well, to dominate these vertices, uh, I, I need someone, uh, if I don't dominate them from the click, then I need uh, both of them to be in the dominating set. So that's one intuition, right? And the second intuition, I want the vertices from dominating set to be independent. Right, this is the second thing. And uh, this I will encode with, with the following gadget. So what uh, this gadget looks like. So I take uh, two vertices, which are adjacent, say U and V, right? And for each pair of adjacent vertices in this instance, in this instance, so for every, for every H, U, V, I add a new vertex W here, right? And I make it adjacent to 
all vertices in this clique except vertex u and to all vertices in this clique except v. Right? So what I enforce with that? Look, what's happening? So again, so I'm looking for dominating set of size k, right? And to dominate this guys, this, uh, this pair of vertices, I need at least one vertex from dominating set from each clique. Right? Now, if uh, this uh, dominating vertices are adjacent in graph G, then who will dominate this vertex? Right. Once again, so, so what I'm claiming that if I have a dominating set, then this dominating set should contain at least one endpoint, uh, should not contain at least one endpoint for every H. Right? Because if there are two endpoints in the dominating set, then uh, this vertex is not adjacent to this endpoint, to that endpoint, and that's the only way to dominate this vertex, actually. Right? So then my claim is the following. If I have an independent set, in graph G, then this independent set is also a dominating set in this graph. And if I have, so yes, uh, okay, so why it's, it's uh, because if I have a, the independent set of size K in this graph, so what's happening? First of all, I dominate all guys here, here, and here, right? Because every vertex in an independent set uh, dominates the clique, and also every guy X and Y is adjacent to all vertices in the clique. So I dominate these people, and also I dominate every vertex W. Y Because this is independent set, so at least one endpoint of W of the H E is not in this independent set, right? So this means that it's adjacent to the vertex of the dominating set. So if I have an independent set here, I have a dominating set here, and other way around, it's exactly the same, right? So I have a dominating set of size K here, Right? So in order to dominate these guys, this uh, vertex should be here. And now, so why they form an independent set? Because they have to dominate also these vertices. Right? So this is a, so, so this is a reduction. And actually, as far as we prove the dominating set is hard, this opens us just a, a whole bunch of problems. So dominating set, so we can now, the, the very useful problem is a red-blue dominating set. I have a vertex, yes? So you said like any dominating set is, uh, is, is an set? No, no, every dominating set of size k. Size uh, of size k, yeah. Otherwise, otherwise it's not true, of course. Yes, otherwise I just take all vertices in the graph and they will, yes, then k, k, k. Okay, red-blue dominating set, for example, I have a set of vertices colored, of the graph colored in red and blue, and I'm asking if there are at most k red vertices which dominate all blue vertices. And then uh, set cover, set cover, I have a set of elements, sets, and I'm asking for a set of size at most k which covers all elements, right? And this is just basically, you can see it as a, uh, a variant of red-blue dominating set, and then uh, as far as you prove that set cover is W1, uh, or set cover is uh, intractable, then uh, the dual of set cover is a heating set, so heating set is also intractable, right? And actually we prove that heating set is fixed parameter tractable, right? But only when uh, the sizes of the sets are bounded, right? But if it's not bounded, then the problem is hard. Yes, and uh, all of them, these problems are equivalent under parameterized reductions, and that's uh, basically mean that they are as flat as a clique. Okay. Uh, okay. So, as, as I, uh, so if uh, we so we cannot use as I already discussed uh, P, V, and P for parameterized problems, right? Because uh, just uh, this is a too, 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 too weak assumption. So, which hypothesis to choose? And again, so if you're an uh, algorithm engineer per person then uh, you can uh, use the hypothesis that k click cannot be solved in FPT time, right? If you're doing complexity of theory, then uh, you should uh, probably use the assumption that uh, k step halting problem. So basically you have an deterministic Turing machine and you ask if the deterministic Turing machine decide the language in at most k steps, then uh, this problem cannot be solved in this time, right? And then again, well, there is a even other type of hypothesis like exponential time hypothesis, which say that n variable 3 sat cannot be solved in time 2 to the small of 
number of variables. And again, so the likely thing is that these things are the same. So, well, it's not apparent, right? But there is a proof which says that uh, these things are the same. So that's why I was using this assumption, right? Uh, and uh, these things are not the same. One thing implies the other. And again, you need a proof for that. But uh, in opposite direction, it's uh, not true. Okay, so what I was, so summary about hardness, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, what is a good thing? So that independent set and case step housing problem, whatever it is, can be reduced to each other. And this means that uh, from, uh, so engineering uh, uh, hypothesis and uh, theorist hypothesis are quite the same here. So that's okay. Now, um, we also show that independent set, well, I show that the clique is reducible to multicolor clique, multicolor clique to multicolor independent set, multicolor independent set to dominating set, right? So there is reduction of independent set to dominating set. Uh, but however, we don't know any reduction from dominating set to independent set. This is a, a little bit strange, and this, and here things become to deviate from the usual P and P story. Right? So, and actually, uh, probably there's no reduction from dominating set to independent set. So basically, uh, just, just because uh, non-FPT non problems, it looks like they're not equivalent. So there are different, and that's why uh, people, uh, so, so uh, we're defining the hierarchy of classes. So this is FPT, then there is a W class W1, then there is a class W2, etc. WP, right? And uh, there are a lot of problems living here, a bit less problem living here. We know problems which are living here, and of course you can construct artificially problems in the class W3, W4, but it's, uh, I don't know of any natural problem which is in class, for example, W5, for example, right? But this, hi this hierarchy is believed to, be, to, to exist, right? So this is, um, so life here is more complicated, and of course you can define completeness, and there are problems which are W1 complete, which are W2 complete, but, uh, so, so somehow, that this, uh, th so when people start doing parameterized complexity with Downian fellows, they were quite, uh, not obsessed, but they were really proven completeness. But after some time, people even dropped doing this because basically the only thing that you want to know if the problem is not fixed parameter tractable. And actually, uh, with the current developments, people even almost stopped doing, uh, proving W1 hardness because there is a more interesting and more, uh, so, conjecture come into play. Oops, I pushed the wrong button. Okay, so there is a, because exponential time hypothesis came into play. So what is the exponential time hypothesis? So exponential, I will, this is a not standard way of stating exponential time hypothesis, but again, if, if you are doing uh, algorithms, that's the most convenient. Okay, so 3SAT, the formula satisfiable for C in CNF, the formula in CNF form, the Boolean formula, with every close of size at most 3, 3SAT, three with n variables and m clauses, cannot be solved in time, 2 power small o of n plus m. Right? So the original way of even, okay, so the original way of uh, putting uh, this ETH was that uh, three sat with n variables and m clauses can be solved in time two to the small of n, right? But uh, there is a proof, there is a lemma which is called sparsification lemma, which shows, which shows that basically these two things are equivalent, right? And again, so this is a bit more useful because so why this thing is useful? If you look at any reduction, uh, like proving something about uh, uh, anti-completeness of some problem on graphs, on strings, on hypergraphs, whatever. So you always, uh, in these reductions, you use, uh, uh, you, uh, it's, uh, it depends on, uh, not only on the variables of the formula, but also on the, on the number of clauses. So this provides you a bit, a bit more control. And again, so as far as we have this assumption, let's just uh, try to see why vertex cover, what can we say about vertex cover? And this is again, so this is a classical uh, NP-completeness uh, proof 
of uh, that vertex cover is NP complete, right? And I'm pretty sure. So, how many of you saw this uh, picture? Yeah, it's a Sifter in Sifter book, right? You start NP completeness, and this is from where. Okay, let, just for those of you who just a very brief uh, description of what's happening here, right? So, I um, have an instance of SAT, and I, no, I have an instance of vertex cover, and I, I want to show that uh, to, to reduce the SAT to vertex cover, right? So, of three SAT to vertex cover. So, what I'm doing, I'm doing this, uh, I'm constructing this graph. So, this, uh, uh, so for every variable, I have two vertices, so it's variable and it's negation. I connect them, right? And then also for every close, I make a triangle, and then, and then I connect this guy. So this uh, variable is connected to, to vertex here. If it's uh, okay, uh, yeah, no, it's in, if, 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 if it's negation. And then uh, so this uh, also it's possible to see, to see, right? That uh, this the, the initial formula is satisfiable if and only if this graph has a vertex cover of size n plus 2m. Right, this is uh, just uh, the, the classic reduction. Okay, what does it mean? So if uh, uh, I apply, uh, so, my, so the size of my graph is O times n plus m, right here. It's linear in the size of the of three sat formula. Okay, so I, I have a ETH which, which says that three sat with n variables and m closes cannot be solved in n this time. And then, uh, unless ETH is wrong, right, vertex cover with n vertices and m edges cannot be solved in time two to the O n plus m, right? Because if I would able to solve vertex cover, right, in this time, then I will use this uh, reduction, and I also use uh, this algorithm to solve SAT. Right? And uh, you know what also what ETH always st stands for, right? It's uh, the technical, the, the, the high school, the technical school in Zurich. So when, you, when I was given uh, this uh, similar talk, not similar, another talk, and I was saying, unless ETH fails, then Professor Widermeyer stand up and said, no, no, this will never happen. <laughs> okay, so that's, uh, okay, this is, uh, okay. And also, look, so this also implies that unless ETH fails, so there's no param uh, parameterized algorithm solving parameterized vertex cover in time two to the small of k, right? Because if there was this algorithm solving this problem in O small of k time, if I take my parameter to be n plus m, right, I will solve vertex cover in this running time, and this will refute ETH. Okay. So this is, uh, and now I actually, so as far as I have this uh, result for vertex cover, I just can take a look at the uh, standard uh, NP completeness reduction, for example, feedback vertex set, right? So feedback vertex set problem, I want to remove at most k vertices such that remaining part of the graph is a forest. Uh, so the reduction is again standard. What I'm doing, I just uh, duplicate every H. So I just create a cycle, and now, so the, the minimum, the minimum of the vertex set here is exactly the minimum vertex cover here and other way around, right? For example, so for some problems, for many problems, this type of reduction works. So you can, and now, and look, and, and now it's again, it's a game changer, right? Because uh, I gave you the algorithm of running time c to the k, two to the k, right? And basically now you can say, aha, this algorithm is almost tight. I cannot improve it asymptotically. And this is uh, always very nice because, yes, uh, well, I'm doing algorithms and I'm excited with algorithms, but what is a really cool thing with algorithms? That you can, very often you can show that what you are doing is tight, so you cannot improve. So basically, uh, so that's how the polynomial time algorithm, approximation algorithms, and also parameterized algorithms are developing, right? Because uh, people know what, is, uh, what are the limitations. And when things go hand in hand, this is always cool. And now here, so with, the, with the ETH, we are able to say something quite strong about the running time of, the, of our algorithms. Okay, so some of these reductions just follow from NP completeness reductions, but for some other problems, people have to really uh, reconstruct the reduction because so when, when you do NP complete reductions, you, it's the only thing you, what you care is just the size of your graph or of your new instance is a polynomial of the previous one, right? So that your reduction is a polynomial re reduction. But here, so, so to, to prove this type of bound, you really want to have your reduction to be linear. 
And for some problems, people were re-engineering, trying to, to obtain new proofs. And for some problems, we just don't know kind of linear type of uh, linear reductions. So this gives a worse bug. Okay, let me think so. I just said, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you, you, you get, you, you, look, look, look you, you still get something. So, yes, so if, you, if, you, if your reduction, for example, is quadratic, the only thing you, you can show that there's no square root of k, for example, mm -hmm. algorithm. For, right, so you have cubic, you know, the only thing you, you show that there's no cubic, small o of cubic root of k algorithm. But, uh, okay. So the other thing uh, which uh, we can use, exponential time hypothesis, we can also use to analyze W1 hard problems. And this is goes beyond uh, FPT and parameterized complexity because parameterized complexity, just say, okay, W1 hard problems are hard, live with that, right? But uh, it's still possible uh, with some, you, you, you need a little bit of uh, new reductions. So, but for, for example, it's possible to show that uh, a clique cannot be solved in time f of k n power small o of k for, for any function f, right? So our algorithm, so the trivial algorithm n power k is again tight here. Right. Okay. Uh, so, but you, you know that a click is uh, not xp, no, something like that? It's xp, it's xp, it's xp because uh, no, yeah, look. It's xp, but it's not xp complete, no? Oh, I, I don't know what the xp complete means. I, 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 this is. I'm not sure I, I defined it. It's a. Okay. I'm not speaking about completeness at all, and I, I'm actually doing this on purpose. I'm really trying to avoid the, the complexity now. It's a. Yeah. Okay. It's a, no, no. It's a, no. It, it, it just, so what, what it shows, because for example, uh, you you solve a click in time n to the k, right? And you know that you cannot solve it in time f of k, but maybe you can solve it in time two to the two to the k times n power square root of k. Example, 2 to the 2 to the k times n square root of k, right? And this, and, and, and this, uh, tell me, no, no, this is impossible, right? Okay, so, but people, so, so things are de de developing and, uh, and, and actually, so what I also want to mention a little bit. So, when we speak about vertex cover, algorithm, right? It was 2 to the k, and then it was 1.6 to the k, and I was saying that it is 1.4 to the k, right? It's still very natural to see if there are any complexity assumptions which tells me that, for example, uh, 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 there's no algorithm of running time 0, 0, 0, 1 to the k, right? Is it possible to obtain such type of assumption? Well, exponential time hypothesis, what it, what it says, if you try to, 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 to look carefully, it just implies that there exists a constant C, such that there is no C to the K algorithm. But if I really want to find this constant, probably I need some other assumptions. And this is what people are coming with a stronger and stronger assumptions. So there is a so-called strong exponential time hypothesis. There is no algorithm solving SAT with n variables in times two minus epsilon n for any epsilon, for any positive epsilon. And this assumption is very strong. So while in, in exponential time hypothesis, more or less people uh, are convinced that yes, this is a true. For this one, it's not clear. So for example, Ryan Williams for some time was trying to refute this. Uh, so, and many other people also tried to refute. People fail, but still it doesn't mean that this is a correct assumption. But again, this is just hypothesis. So if we are assuming this hypothesis, we can walk from it. And then if you refute it, very nice. You will also maybe get better algorithms for other problems. And if at, at some moment you will see connection of this uh, hypothesis with other hypothesis, maybe people will be believe more in that, right? So this is a working state. But unfortunately, so it's like, uh, again, so there's a P and P. When I start speaking about parameterized complexity, we already have several classes. And when we start speaking about strong ETH, so the situation here becomes even worse. And this is I just, uh, this is I stole from uh, Amir Abud's slides two years ago and uh, it's still developing. So now people making a lot of different assumptions about polynomial time algorithms, about exponential time algorithms, and some of them assumptions are equivalent. 
so, and some assumptions we just uh, it, so it looks like this world is much more complicated so and you can make different some assumptions become wrong occasionally but this is just what happening now so so far at least uh, I'm a bit outside of this area to me it looks like uh, quite messy at the moment so there's no any how say uh, general theory saying what's happening there but again it's just the area is just developing it's it's always a mess in the beginning right so it's uh, so this is uh, yes Yes. Okay, that's, uh, no, no, but uh, you, uh, it, it's for problem in P. But again, so you can also use this for a problem in in in, in, in P. And, and and also so uh, per, so when I speak about parameterized problem, I can also speak about as they are the problem in also in P because for every fixed k they are in, in P, yes. right? So for example, can I find a dominating set of size three in a graph faster than n cube? Things like that, right? It's happening. So, no, it's, 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 things, uh, things are very well connected. So, so it's a P and P, so things. Yes? But linear programming, uh, there's some polynomial, I think that's what he means. Uh, I just copied the slide, Marcus, to be honest. I, I should, I should. <laughs> yes, I, I, I think it's, uh, no, no, no. For linear program, uh, I, d I doubt you have any upper bound uh, beyond matrix multiplication. That should be, right? It's, uh, so matrix multiplication should be there because you have to inverse at some moment the matrix. But uh, if you can do anything better. And again, I, but, uh, I, but even for matrix multiplication, right? What is the right lower bound? We still don't know it's in square, right? Or it's, uh, Yes, yes, so that's uh, the people which I really rip off for many things, for slides. Okay, and, uh, okay, so, and uh, the final thing which I want to speak, again, also, you know, so how to start, uh, or, or where? where? No, where? Ah, okay, that's uh, okay. 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 Uh, so just l just let's speak a little bit about the future or what happening in the area by by now because the area is already quite old, like more than twenty years. So what are the new trends and what happening there? Okay. So first of all, uh, at some uh, so when you become older, you become more and more philosophically <laughs> minded, right? And then basically, if we look what is the uh, parameterized algorithms and what are criminalization is, what is the main idea behind this, right? So basically, uh, what we learned, if you understand the structure of the problem, you will be able to use the structure to get a better algorithm, right? So if you view this as a philosophy of parameterized complexity, then uh, this you can apply the same philosophy to any algorithmic technique you can come out, right? So for example, for approximation algorithms, that can be, so parameterized algorithms, it seems to blend well with approximation. Oh. No, no, I cannot uh, turn off projector with this one. Oh, sorry, uh, okay. <laughs> yes, uh, we can try to, and people do it, right? Parameterize analysis of a polynomial time algorithm, right? When the structure, can you, we, we can exploit the structure, for example, to, to get a faster matching algorithm, for example. Or uh, can you use structure to get better matrix multiplication algorithms? Streaming algorithms, dynamic algorithms. And so it's, it looks like it's just uh, this co concept is uh, very well applied to different areas of algorithms. So let me just uh, briefly uh, just give one example what I mean by, for example, blending FPT and approxima approximation algorithms. So what can be done when FPT, the problem is not fixed parameter tractable and when it doesn't have a good approximation, right? So just uh, let's take at this example, partial vertex color. I have an input graph G, parameter K, and I'm asking what is the maximum number of edges in G that can be covered by this K vertices, right? So if I ask to cover all vertex edges in the graph, then it's just a vertex cover. But this is a, a maximization version of vertex cover. Okay. 
So first of all, uh, so for FPT, it's possible to show that the problem is W1 hard with respect to K, right? And also, it's possible that the, the problem is APX hard, so there's no polynomial time approximation scheme for this problem. Okay, let me show that's what, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, let's show, let me uh, just, uh, what, uh, what is the FPT approximation scheme will be here. Okay. So what I mean by one plus epsilon approximation parameterized algorithm. So again, I have a, I get an instance g comma k, right? And I want to return you a set of vertices of size k, which covers at optimum over one plus epsilon edges, right? So it's one plus epsilon far from the optimal solution. And the running time here should be f of k, Epsilon times some polynomial, right? So if I forget about epsilon here, right, and use it only on k, then it will be a parameterized algorithm. If I have a function which is uh, which is purely a polynomial, that will be, or which is purely depends only on epsilon, that will be a normal approximation scheme, right? But both two things are impossible, both things are impossible, but when I put them together, luckily, we'll see what will happen. Okay, so let me just uh, introduce this value, uh, large d. And then uh, what I'm doing, so my algorithm is very simple. So I just order the vertices of the graph according to their degrees, right? So I take this ordering. And first, let me just uh, take uh, two cases. So the first case is when the maximum degree of the graph is larger than this threshold, capital D. So what's happening now? Actually, at this moment, I am very happy because I just output the first k vertices, the vertices of the largest degree. And I say, actually, this is my approximate solution. Why? Okay. So I, I need to do some uh, calculus here. So, the, so what, uh, what are my estimations? So if I have this set uh, uh, S of vertices, how many edges they cover, right? Well, every vertex covered uh, uh, this amount of edges, but then I, maybe I counted uh, some edges I count twice, right? So this is what I'm taking care of. On the other hand, uh, I know that because these are the vertices of the maximum degree, so the maximum number of ages k vertices can cover is always at least as the sum of these degrees. Right, so in this situation, when I out output k, uh, the first k vertices, I have a good approximation, right? Because if I take the ratio of value of uh, which uh, these vertices provide, divided by optimum, and again, I will get at the end that this value is at least one times over one plus epsilon. So in this, uh, in this case, so if this uh, degree is at least D, I have an approximation. Okay, let's see what happens if this degree is at most D. Okay, then uh, actually, yes, this means that also this is the vertex is the maximum, so I, uh, this is the maximum degree. And then in this case, I'm claiming that I can solve the problem actually optimally in time uh, which is uh, uh, which is structure which is uh, FPT in K, right? So what uh, uh, how I can do it? Uh, so what what happening here? Okay, I have a graph, so I have a set of vertices of size K. Degree of the vertices are bounded, right? So these are the bounded degrees. And now I am asking what is the best uh, situation, how many uh, I, I can pick up at most k d vertices to be the optimal solution. But this, uh, you remember, I start, uh, when, I start, when I was speaking about some techniques, I was speaking about random separation, how to find subgraph, how to solve subgraph isomorphism in graphs of bounded degree. So the trick, the, tr the trick is usual. I use random separation, which means that I just color uniformly at random uh, vertices uh, in red and blue. And then uh, with a good probability, I can claim 
that uh, the vertices, uh, this the first, the optimum solution is red, the neighborhood is blue, and then I just can solve this problem into this time. Or if you, if you, if you're not fancy about random separation, actually the brute force will give you worse running time, but it still be FPT because in D and in epsilon, right? Because D is bounded by as a function of k and epsilon, right? So what happened, right? Su summing up. So if degree is large, then the greedy approach, take the first k vertices of largest degrees, give a good approximation. If degree is small, then I can solve the problem in FPT time, FPT and k and epsilon. So this is exactly the algorithm which I was claiming. Right, so this is it. the algorithm I was claiming for. And actually, so there are a lot of things happening here. So if you look very recently, so there was a, a lot of, uh, for a long time it was open problem if dominating set admits FPT, any FPT approximation, for example. And finally it was resolved, uh, so th this year. So the same, so, so there was a, a the approximation, FPT approximation algorithms for two CSP and directed Steiner networks for KCAT. So there are a lot of work happening very recently in this direction. You call it FPT algorithm, you call it approximation algorithms, I don't know, so this is a, and basically if you work in approximation algorithms and you, and, you, and you have your favorite intractable problems, it makes sense to look what's happening with FPT approximation. Again, there's no guarantee that you put two things together, they will work, right? But if they work, that is always nice. Okay. And uh, a little bit also another, so I was speaking, so that's how to blend uh, FP, FPT and approximation. But also we spoke a lot about kernels, and also it's possible to blend kernels and approximation as well. Okay, so let's uh, again do the same thing for partial vertex cover, right? So that's again the same problem. And uh, this is uh, again the, 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 the same algorithm. So what's happening here? So I order the, the, again the vertices, I take the first k vertices, and I know that the optimal solution uh, which is kept in this vertices is at least one epsilon plus uh, times opt. Okay, so let's just take care more carefully at the second case. So, for the so when I wanted to get an algorithm, I just was uh, solving this case exp explicitly. Okay, now what I'm doing, I don't want to solve the problem because now I just want to find some approximate kernel. So what I'm doing, I just take the first k times d plus one plus one vertices. And I claim that there is always an optimal solution there. Right? Do you see why? Or are you already exhausted for this week of all possible <laughs> algorithms? Okay, now this is, this, this, this is not difficult. So uh, why? Okay. So I, I have a ordering of the vertices according to the degrees, right? And I'm taking this K D plus one vertex, right? Suppose that uh, some solution, I just take a solution which, uh, which is uh, the smallest lexicographically solution in, in, uh, up to this ordering, right? So it lives somewhere, say, here, 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 here. And suppose that this solution has a vertex outside, right? So, so it covers some edges. But uh, because the vertices are ordered according to degrees, and because I take so many vertices, there, uh, there should be a vertex here which is not adjacent to any vertex from this solution. Right? I, I'm looking only for k vertices, and I take too many of them, right? So I cannot take too sm small amount of them, because uh, then uh, uh, maybe some edges will be uh, counted twice. But uh, if I take too many of them, I know that there is always a spot which is not adjacent to any of these guys. But then why I'm taking this vertex and not this one? This vertex cover more edges than this one. So I can plug it in, right? 
So this is uh, the idea. So there is all this optimal solution among them. And then, so this means that I, if I take the graph which is induced by these vertices, it has uh, this amount of uh, vertices, right? So I have a reduced, yes, so then I, I can, so then my algorithm will be the following. I just take this, um, this number of vertices, and that will be my reduced instance, right? So, so because I know that if there is an optimal solution, it also should be an optimal solution living in this set of vertices. Once again, because I was saying that if there is an optimal solution, then I can pick up solution uh, among these vertices, right? So, so I, I have the first k d square vertices, and then I just take also all neighbors of them. And then uh, if I have solution of size k in this uh, graph, so then, th then the optimal solution of size k in this graph is exactly of the same size as the optimal solution in the original graph, right? So, and this is a kernel, right? So again, so what, I, what I have, right, so what, what kind of algorithm I have, right? So if degree is large, then I have an approximate solution, and if degree is small, I have a kernel of polynomial size, actually. So that's another theme, so which people start to develop, right? So this is a kind of, kind of thing which is called lossy kernel. Why lossy, right? Because you lose something, but... Yes, and lossy kernel, again, so people also working on Steiner tree, connected vertex cover, cycle packing, and there was uh, the, the Fox 2016 paper of uh, Lakshtanov, Saurab, uh, I think Panalan, uh, and MSR on, on this. Uh, and uh, actually, again, the commercial is uh, here, so the book is out, so lossy mm -hmm. kernel chapter is there. Please, uh, and if you don't want to buy our book, uh, I will put it online soon, okay? <laughs> yes. Okay, so, and actually, uh, so I want to conclude with, uh, for you, something to take uh, home message, right? And the best thing uh, to take home are some problems to think of, right? If you solve them, you will be great. That's, uh, okay. So first problem, uh, again, and, and this is a very biased selection of problems. It's just, uh, well, the problems which I like. So it's like, a, okay. So the first thing is called K-path polynomial Turing kernel. So you know that in complexity there are there is a carp reduction and there is a Turing reduction, right? So basically, if you, you speak about algorithms, what kernel is doing? So kernel is a carp reduction. I take one problem and I construct instance of the same problem of smaller size, right? But it will be very useful for at least from the, or for algorithm from algorithm perspective. I, actually, I wouldn't care if I take one instance and I can construct polynomial many instances of the same problem such that at least one of them will be equivalent to my problem. Right? This is a Turing reduction. Right? So in, in, for, for, for k-path, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for the following thing. I, have an inst I, I want to have an algorithm which takes an instance of a k-path, right? And construct me a polynomial in n number of instances of k-path problem such that this graph contains, the original graph contains a k-path if and only if at least one of these uh, graphs contains a k-path, right? From the algorithm perspective, perspective it will be quite uh, not much different from the kernel, right? Because I have polynomial many instances, I can solve each of them, right? And the sizes of them are small now, so that will be that will, will be a Turing kernel. Okay, so what we know, we know that uh, for, for k-path there is no polynomial kernel at, uh, unless uh, polynomial time hierarchy collapses to the third level, uh, but uh, we still don't know if there is a Turing kernel for this problem or not. So the guess will be no, but who knows, because for planar graphs, for example, uh, where, uh, again, uh, so if I, if I have my graph is planar, again, I can show that the k-path doesn't have a polynomial kernel, but the, it's known that there, uh, there is a Turing kernel, for example. So this is the first thing. So just to see what's happening here. And if you are more in like, in, uh, not in problem solvers, but in theory buildings. So basically there's not much uh, known about theory of Turing canonization. So what will be the uh, hard problem there? What will be completeness there? So how to, how to, how to prove that the pr problem doesn't admit the polynomial kernel? Nothing of this type is known. So it's like basically a completely open area. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Of, uh, 
Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes, and 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 and, and, and there are and there are examples for, like for planar graphs mm -hmm. when this is helpful. Surprisingly, so it's a, it's different from normal. Uh, apparently, it's different from normal linearization. And this uh, planar graph doesn't have. A, uh, yes, and planar graph doesn't. Does plan, so K path on planar graphs doesn't have a polynomial kernel. Because it's NP-complete, and again, so the same t type of arguments which I was given for k-path and general graphs, you can argue so th on, pl on planar graphs. But the uh, Turing kernel is there. And uh, for more concrete problems, okay, so I was speaking about single exponential algorithm for k-path, and actually uh, it's possible also to do the same algorithm for direct graphs. But for directing graphs, uh, and actually for undirected graphs, uh, there is a randomized algorithm uh, which solves k paths faster than total decay. But for directing graphs, this is uh, widely open. This is um, the other thing. And the other thing, it's, uh, it's a less uh, fundamental problem, but still it's a very uh, funny problem. So this is a bandwidth minimization problem. So the bandwidth minimization problem, it's... Uh, It's, it's, it's quite old problem. It goes from uh, 1960s, and it's about matrix, uh, sparse matrix. So you have a sparse matrix, and you want to permute the columns and the rows of the matrix such that all non-zero elements will be along the main diagonal in a small band. That's from where the name bandwidths come. But also equivalent formalization of the problem in the in graphs. So I want to number the vertices of the graph from 1 to n. So basically, I want to put them on a line. And I want to minimize the maximum h stretch. So when I have my graph embedded in the line, for every h, I can compute the length of the h given by this numbering. Right? And then I want to minimize the maximum of this stretch. So I want to find the labeling which minimizes the maximum. Okay, so this is a problem, it's an uh, unpleasant problem. So it's uh, NP-complete even on trees, on a very special type of trees. And then also there's no good approximation at all. It's also, the problem is WP hard on, uh, but surprisingly, so there is a FPT approximation uh, on trees, is the, uh, the, the number, is the optimal, the, the optimal solution. So, so this is. So this is this, this uh, min, min, min max of the labeling B, I minus B, J, where I and J are the H of the graph. Yeah. So I take um, I, I take a minimum of all possible uh, orderings, and and for every ordering. I look at the maximum stretch of the H, right? Is it a factor like for a statistic parameter? Because uh, I mean, when you say that it's W one higher, it's like okay. So, so then, okay, 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 okay. Good, good question. So then I ask if the bandwidth of a graph G is at most K. Uh, okay, this is the parameter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and uh, the problem is in XP. So there is an end to the O of K algorithm. You have to do dynamic programming. You have to, it, it, it should be clever dynamic programming, but still it's dynamic programming. Right? So, so the problem is in XP. So this is the... And again, to conclude, so just again, that you, you already saw the slides, <laughs> right? Uh, Look, what I did uh, in these five lectures, I only scratched the surface, so it was more commercial. So if you really like the area, just try to read, try to do postdoc somewhere, right? Or try to do PhD somewhere in this area, and just yes. And basically, uh, yes, and I, these slides were basically these nice pictures of plane and stop, and that was of Meraf. And thank you very much for surviving until the end. Yeah.
Sorry? Ah, no, no, so, yeah, no, 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 no. This is, you can ask even, uh, okay, so for bandwidth, you can ask even a uh, much uh, weaker question, which still we don't know. If there is any f of k approximation in time, f of k. So e e even that is widely open. That's it, sir. No, no, if, if it will be like if uh, you either find a solution of size at most f of k, in, right? Yeah, right? Or, uh, no size k. yes, or say that there's no solution of size k. Yes, exactly, yeah. That's what I mean by this f of k approximation. No, but for example, what, 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 what Virginia was doing with her students, uh, what Virginia was doing with her students, for example, she was looking for diameter of a graph, parameterized by trivets. Yeah. Or what we were doing, we, we, we were also do, doing um, matching, parameterized by trivets. Okay. And for example, if you, you show that when the trivets is uh, something like polylog, then you can solve matching problem faster than on, on general graphs. So that's, that's, that's what I mean by... Uh, Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is This also, I don't know, and uh, Jeremy, this is like, uh, makes a lot of sense, actually. I just, uh, yeah. Uh, look, uh, p uh, so the, the, the problem is still, it's like, uh, it's, there are some borders between the communities, right? And this is like, so people from working in FPT, maybe they don't know about this type of problems. Okay. And people working in that area, they also not aware how to apply FPT techniques. But, so that's, that can be explanation, maybe, yeah. Very good, yeah. yeah. So do you know if there is any You, you, you just um, try to look at uh, Stefan Crutch. Uh, Stefan Crutch. I think Stefan Crutch uh, or some other people from Rolf Niedermeyer group. So they were doing like, uh, yeah, because uh, when you add weights to the problems, so, so what's happening, so can you do a parameter, parameterization for weighted problems? So these things, and... Um, they, they add But uh, for example, uh, so if you look, uh, it, it changes, right? Because um, uh, when you add weights, you, uh, no, no. So if you parameterize by objective function, usually it's not so interesting because if the weights are large, you, you increase your parameter. Yeah. But if you look in, for example, vertex cover is still the same algorithm. But for example, vertex cover parameter is the size of the vertex cover. But you want to find the size k vertex cover of maximum weight now. This changed a lot, and this is the way the way the problems they become way more interesting. And then again, there are there are very few results happening there. That's uh, no, this is also quite exciting what, what you can do there for weighted versions. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
Okay, we're done. Okay. Clap again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.